The Beacon API is an experimental browser API that is designed for logging and analytics. It is specifically best for sending diagnostic and analytics as a post request without expecting an answer which obviously when you do that when you don't expect an answer when you don't consume the result this prevents any delays in the user experience right and uh, we're going to go through examples of how be the beacon api can be actually useful in this video i want to go through the this api i'm going to show you some examples where it is actually used and how did i actually discover it it was just totally by accident i discovered like what is beacon right and uh we're gonna go through a like a real use case where i will actually use that a beacon api right some code how about that guys let's just jump into it if you're here and you're here welcome my name is hussein in this channel we discuss all sorts all sorts of software engineering by example so if you want to become a better software engineer consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time i upload a new video that said let's just jump into this video all right so so here's the thing. so the beacon api is nothing but think of it like it's exactly like a fetch command fetch api or this xml http request but it only sent post request it only sent the data sent are kind of limited you can only send text content i think right that's what i saw i i couldn't see an api change where you can say hey, i want to send json you i can only send text or url parameters obviously which are all pretty much all text right and the result from the server for the beacon api has to be most of the time a 204 which means i don't have content do not waste your time and send content back to the server because this like, client will never actually consume it right so these are the three main component technical main component of the beacon api so it's just like a little bit fancier faster api just to do this analysis analytics and logging that you don't really care for uh to, to let the user know that hey i just logged your data right so where did how did i find this okay i was going actually in firefox so let me move to firefox so i was going firefox and i was googling something right I usually use Chrome, but I was using Firefox for that. And so I was just like look, doing like, I don't know, uh, I was searching for something. And I went to the web console and start searching a uh, test uh, JavaScript, anything, right? I started searching for something. And then I went to the network. And here's what I noticed. I noticed there is a cause column. Okay. And what is the cause? Like, okay, this is an image. This is an image actually made this request. A document made this request. A fetch request made this command. And this is... It's like an XHR made this request or, or fetch made this request. And here's the thing. I saw this beacon. Look at what the, what the heck is a beacon, right? And here's like some, this is the beacon. So the beacon, it sends a bunch of URL parameters, some useful information for Google. God knows what is this. Something about me, probably, right? To, to change my experience. And there is like the, the results we said, right? 204, no content the beacon api returns nothing okay so that's what i noticed that's when i saw it. it's like ah, so i started googling it and so i was like okay let's let's build something with this api here's what i have i have i built a very quick and dirty gallery image gallery and it has very it's a like i'm gonna share the code below right i'm not right i'm not writing it from scratch because it's very simple really it doesn't i'm not using react or anything like that it's just very basic vanilla http and express on the back right so it's an image right the moment you put an image you put next you go to the next image right an id just like previous you can go to the next image next image next image previous right so that's essentially the the gallery that i put and here's what i want you i want and you, you start seeing the timer for uh, for the client side i started a timer essentially and the moment the page loads I stamp the date and then every, I don't know, 100 millisecond, I just count and then update the display. It's like, and the reason I'm doing that is like, I want to see how long the user is actually looking at a picture, okay? And I want to use this as an analytics and I send it to the server, okay? I want to say, like, hey, this picture, ID number two, people 
average look at this picture for 30 seconds or 20 seconds right and for this picture it's like if you don't like a picture you'll directly move next right so if you spend more time looking at a picture that means you can actually like the picture or you're like studying it or it's an interesting or something right so we then want to store this data on a postgres database for example and then just uh, take the average like hey this picture is like people look at it averagely for three, four seconds versus this picture is really 10 seconds. So you want this picture to, you can sell this picture as like, hey, this is people pay more attention to this picture versus this. So you can do like A-B testing or, or something like that, right? Or just like use it for an ad or, or thumbnail, right? So A-B testing kind of a thing. So I'm, I'm just having a bunch of images and I'm using the bacon API. I want to use the bacon API to do that. So let's go through the code. I'm going to show you how the code actually works today because there is no bacon API or no salami API or nothing. <laughs> that was a bad joke. All right. So... Here's the backend server. It's an index.js. It's a very simple stuff. Or Coin Express and the jazz, regular jazz. If you visit slash, I'm gonna give you the index.html. I'm gonna go through the index.html code. And if you visit the image, essentially I'm returning the image, right? And there and I have a folder with all these images that we just took, right? It's very simple. I'm gonna share the code bill. Uh, so I'm listening port 88. So there's nothing fancy here, no post records, nothing. Go to the index HTML. That's an interesting part. I have a label showing the time, right? And the script, and the script, the moment the script, the script starts, I stand the current date, right? And then there's a variable that just show me the time, right? I'm gonna use it there. I use this code to actually get the ID from the image as we can so right that I, I want to get this number four right because I'm using it okay so if there is no ID then I assume this is the first image if there is then I parse an integer and then I call this update time so this this actually kicks in and uh, just just literally calculates the time every hundred milliseconds right just the uh, and I start updating that time very simple stuff okay and then here's what I actually create the image for the first time because it loads and I use the ID of the image loads from the origin URL dot origin wherever I and then uh, once I do that uh, the image loads I can sit down hide and I add it to the body all that jazz silly stuff right and then add the next and the previous image the next image is ID plus one da right and the previous image is actually ID minus one right simple stuff guys yep and here's what I want to do I want to use this beacon API, right? To when the person or the user leaves the image, I want to send the current time, which is what? Which is the time spent, right? Is that is that what I did? Yes, I updating the I'm updating the time spent every time, right? So I want to send this time spent to the server and I want to do something with it, right? Where it's stored in a database, right? And I want to send both the ID, the current ID. And the time spent. So this user for this picture five, it spent thirty seconds looking at it, right? Something like that. So how do I do that? It Beacon API is a completely client side, right? So how do how do you use that Beacon API to actually send a request? So how about we go to the server, and since it's a post request, so I have to create a post, right? So I'm gonna do a post, and if you someone posts anything here. For fancy, I'm just gonna send back the status. What did we say, guys? It's 204. That means, hey, I don't have anything. And I'm just gonna log back request the query, which is a query parameter. And I'm assuming there will be an ID, right? So we have to send the ID. Let's just say ID equal this. And the time spent equal time spent how about that because we have it right which is request that i did a time spent sure okay so we need to send these two parameters how about we just start and use the api from the log okay why are you like yelling at me what did i do wrong well i didn't close this that's why so it's just started Real quick, right? Is it? It's listening. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here, and let's just go and actually show you how to use the Beacon API. 
So the bacon API, <laughs> I keep saying bacon. All right, so this is how you do it. Navigator dot send beacon. Very simple. And what is the beacon here? The URL, HTTP, localhost, 8080. And what are we sending? We're sending two information, ID equal seven, for example, and time spent equal the one, two, three, right? Milliseconds. And here's the cool thing about this. If you send, it immediately obviously sent. And did you notice? I didn't give the results back, yet it returns true that it actually promised to send that request. It, it is not... It doesn't return an actual promise, a JavaScript promise. It actually returns true, a Boolean, immediately. And here's the thing. For in that, we got the results, ID7123 spent, and then we send back the results, right? So here's the power of this. The power of this is you send the request, you don't really care about a response. And some people really love this. And you can start using this to, to actually for gaming even, like, hey, I'm sending just analytics. It's okay if it doesn't really make it but I just want to send it logging information, right? So logging is really good here. Okay, so how about we actually use this API in our HTML because that's where we go, right? All right, so how do we do it? Very simple. There is, what does it mean when a, when a person navigate away to another image, right? It's very simple. The window is unloading, right? So there's an event called add event listener on the window and it's called literally unload. Right? And if someone unloads, I want you to call this function. What does this function do? Very simple. Navigator dot send beacon. And what do we send? HTTP, localhost. We can be fancy guys and use the, what is called the origin, but it's just a test, right? And then let's use the text here. And where is it? ID is equal. ID because I am in the HTML and I do have an ID, right? There's the ID. I want to just send the ID and the time spent is equal what? The time spent. It's a variable, right? Let's make sure it's there. Time spent with a capital camel case. Camel case. All right. So you can, you can decide to do something with the results, right? Right. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do with this results, really. I, don't, I find this Boolean useless because, yeah, I'm, I just left, especially in this context where I left the page. I am unloading the page altogether. I left it. What do I do with the true or false? The client is dead, right? Well, let's just check it out. So here's the thing. We should start seeing some results here, right? And if I refresh, and then next. Ooh. All right, so we should remove that post thing because the moment I did, it sent a post request, obviously. And it says 102 milliseconds, right? Because it is an MS milliseconds. All right, let's do it again. Refresh. What is that? Remove that stuff. Okay, so let's go to the next picture. Next picture. Next picture. Previous picture. Let's. Next, next, next. Let's spend more time looking at this picture. So we're going to spend three, four seconds looking at this picture and then navigate away. And then look at that. We're getting all the results, guys. And you can take these results and throw them in Postgres database. So you're saying, well, how do I do that? Well, we made a lot of videos about how to combine JavaScript, Node.js with Postgres. I'm going to reference the video here. So you just throw this here and then do a SQL query where, hey, where some, I don't know if some, Select uh, ID comma average time spent, right? Where I don't have to do where really, and then group by ID and then order by time spent, and then you have the everything is ordered. Now you can also be fancy, it's like, hey, you know what? I don't want to, uh, like times, like, if what if someone left the picture like and like that, right? It's like for, for I don't know, one hour. So you want to remove all these entries that doesn't make sense or entries that are very large or entries that are very short right like zero milliseconds no you want to keep those like one millisecond that means like your picture really sucked i didn't even want to look at it right all right guys so i forgot to mention one small thing here it's like why would you use the beacon api on unload versus like the fetch because it will do exactly the same thing like you can do a fetch api here and exactly do like i don't know something like that and then post right 
do a post. Why would you do that? The Fetch API will actually consume some time of the event main loop, and that could slow down the navigation process. So if you move, the user clicks, oh, I want to move to the next picture, the onload actually will kind of, kind of, uh, will kind of pause and delay, and that will slow down the user experience versus using just the Beacon API, which is like, hey, send it and forget about it. So it's way faster to do this, right? If you're not expecting results, that is, right? Versus using the Fitch API. So that's the, that's the uh, point I want to you uh, want I want to mention. So yeah, that's that's the Beacon API. That's what I want to show you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Very short. Gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.